When a few months ago the Amax company contacted me about their new motors, I was like, well, motors, I'm not really that much into it. However, they were quite persistent with saying that, try them, you will like them. I yielded, I tried them, and guess what? I like them. So let's see what's up with the Amax Performante 2207 motors. This is the Amax Performante 2207 motor in the box. If we would remove the box, this is the motor itself and from the outside, in theory, it looks like just any other 5-inch brushless motor. The styling is different, the color is nice silver, but besides that, it looks like the any other brushless motor. However, according to Amax, what's different with those motors, it's how they are built. The special sauce is how the bell is built, because unlike the traditional motors, it's one piece of the metal, but unlike the traditional unibell, designs it's much lighter amax called the style the t-bell the bell is held by a single screw and when you open this thing you get the stator and the bell let's begin with the stator stator i have the version with 2207 1950 kv it's winded with the single wire it's maybe not the nicest winding ever but the quality looks okay -ish. According to Amax, the really interesting thing is the bell, because, like I mentioned before, it's made from the single piece of the metal, but unlike the traditional unibells, it's much lighter. And because this is the V2, they were able to improve the durability, which was a problem with the V1. Both the outside part of the bell and those struts that are holding the bell to the central place where the shaft is located is relatively, well, light there is not very much material in it. Inside, of course, we have a place for the 14 magnets and if you look carefully, there are specially manufactured cut detents, no, well, not some extrusions from the bell that precisely positions the magnet in place and also the bell is dynamically at least i hope it's dynamically balanced because over there you should be able to see it there is some kind of the epoxy glue that just balances the bell so it doesn't vibrate and finally a strange choice because the name and the size of the motor is over here with the teeny tiny laser and grave letters and if you do not know where to look at it you might even have a problem to find the bell weights 14 grams if you add the stator and the standard length of the cable you are up to 34 and after adding the screw that holds the bell to the stator and the propeller nut you are at well still 34 grams but the final question is how do they behave in flight so let me put them on my five inch drone and let's figure this thing out My first take was that something is wrong with the motors because as soon as I took off I had enormous amount of vibrations on the high throttle but then I realized that my previous motors which were Emacs Eco 2 2306 well they are not the torquiest motor ever so maybe just the increased torque of the 2207 with those fancy new bells caused just too much of the vibrations getting through the gyro and guess what I was correct only after I slightly lowered the D gains, lowered the P gains and tweaked some other settings, the quad immediately started to fly just... Love it, love it, love it. The Amax Performante 2207 have a really pretty decent amount of the torque on both the low end and the high end. That means that when you pull the throttle down, the quad is still controllable, but when you open the throttle, well, the hell just breaks loose and this thing just screams forward like crazy.
because we do not do a static motor test over here. You just have to trust me that from the feeling from the flight, the efficiency and the power consumptions is basically exactly the same as usual comparing to the motors I was using before. However, they are indeed much more torquier than the Emax Eco 2 2306 I was using before. Bottom line, are those good motors? I think so. There is one question that, well, you cannot really answer in only a few packs because we have no really idea how tough and how resistant to crashes those motors are. I'm well not usually flying in the Bando style when there is a lot of concrete to damage my equipment, so no idea. Over here, well, I know this field almost perfectly, I'm almost not crashing, so I think that the durability should be just fine. The Amax said that, the, this is the V2 version by the way, that comparing to the V1 they beefed the motor up, so now the Low resistance to crashes problems should be somehow resolved. The ultimate prerogative of most of the reviews and the sign that, yeah, actually the reviewer liked the product is the possibility of the reviewer to keep the product. And guess what? I'm keeping those motor installed on my 5-inch quad. They look good, they work good and work much better than my previous motor, so why not to just like them and use them? If you would like to know how to choose motors for your drone, here's the video for you. I'm Paweł Spychalski, thank you very much for watching and, like always, happy flying!